In a work like this, one of the things that's, I think, important about what I'm trying to do with sculpture is to create intimacy, to create a place where the feeling of things touching or almost touching gives you a feeling. And so you're looking hard and you're seeing, you know, two objects that are touching in this most vulnerable place. Um, this is what I see. I mean, other people don't have to see it this way, but this is what I see. And so for me, when I made this piece, I thought, oh, these are lovers. Like they're maybe not humans. Like maybe they're two organisms that have to touch in order to reproduce or exchange, you know, something. Maybe they're even, you know, like a, like a plant and a bumblebee or something. Like they're two things that, that work together. Um, that, that need each other, that take energy from each other. And so in a work like this, like I view, I view this as two you know, entities that are touching at their most vulnerable. At the same time, I also see, um, and I like to think a lot about, um, I view this kind of area as technological um, and that perhaps maybe they're being scanned like, uh, you know, like the, for the interior of their body or, or something like this. And at the same time, maybe they're reproducing. That's why they're touching. Or maybe one of them is, has passed away or is not, doesn't have life anymore. And one of them is, you know, I don't know. It has to do with all these different kinds of things. Um, and then at the same time, I, I really enjoy to use like uh, the language of I don't know, taboo or erotic, like this is some sort of pubic hair or body hair or some sort of like, there's a very intimate quality in which this is poking out from here. And I like to try to create these, these interactions between the objects. So I think it is also important to talk about material transference. And so this is something for me that I am interested in in terms of hair growth, horns, fingernails, um, body waste, and the kind of the transference of material. And so for a work like this, one of the things that I've arrived at is that even though it looks organic, like it could be a kind of stomach, I, when I first started looking at this work, because it has these vertical parts here, I always associated these with smokestack. And so I, I arrived at the kind of feeling that this, this part of the piece is architecture and that it is um, a place where energy is created and that the, the residue of this transference of material is this kind of toxic green ribbon. And so I then view like the energy that, that's made here as going through these and being stored into this kind of reservoir and that the reservoir then leaks out this ribbon, which um, ends up being the kind of, I don't know, life material or something. It's like a food or it's like gas or it's like something that makes whatever you need to have happen, happen. But there's a consequence to this activity. And so to me, there's a part of this work that has to do with climate or environment, or at least the relationship that we have between living and dying. Certain things have to happen. Like in order to live, you need to ingest or pull energy from, you need to create destruction in order to create reproduction, you know? And so some things have to be destroyed in order to have creation. And so I, I kind of view this as, as a necessary form, but also a destructive form. And so there's a little bit about this entire exhibition that has to do with this two-sided coin of, of creation and destruction. I mean, I was an, alone a lot as a child, and I think I, I just fantasized. And I mean, I drew, I was outside. My mother was a teacher, so I had the summers with my mother, like just sitting in the yard doing things. I think, I mean, I don't think that I had a, a very unique childhood. I mean, my parents were very supportive of my 
creativity, um, which I think was a real privilege to be supported by my parents. Um, my father makes sculpture, but he's not, um, wasn't trained. He it was something he did with his friends kind of on the weekend. He trained with a local sculptor and, the, and their atelier. And so I grew up with some creativity around me, but I really came into art making through um, photography. When I was a teenager, I wanted I made a magazine with my friend about punk rock scene. And, you know, we would creep up on local kids that were in bands that were older than us. And we wanted to make photographs of them or have photography in the magazine. And so I decided to try to figure out photography so that we could have photographs in the magazine. And that led me to my creativity. Some of the first exhibitions that I saw that were uh, formative for me were uh, like David Hockney. Uh, his photography. There was an exhibition of his um, Cubist photography in Louisville, where I grew up, which was very um, formative experience for me because it showed there was a film about how he made the, the pictures and there was so much freedom and expression there. It was really a formative experience for me. But um, I mean, I grew up kind of banal, you know, was I, I had a lot of freedom, though, you know, I ne my parents never really denied me any experiences. I just kind of did what I wanted to do and I guess I've kind of lived the rest of my life in a similar way. So I guess that's, I've been very lucky that way.